Fox killed him. Disney brought him back. They're going to make him do this till he's 90. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and you'd better load up your gold plated 50 caliber Desert Eagle pistol arrows because we're counting down our picks for the standout scenes from Deadpool and Wolverine. All the spoilers ahead. So consider yourself warned, bub. Suck it, Fox. I'm going to Disneyland. Number 10 Feige's Rules. Wade's birthday bash is pretty low-key for the most part until the Time Variance Authority crashes the party, but he still finds a way to fit in plenty of gags that had us doubling over. This is mainly due to his interactions with longtime friend, confidant, and known cocaine lover Blind Al. Pray every day that fire finds your body and finishes the job God didn't have the nuts to do. Unfortunately for her, as Wade points out, the one rule that Kevin Feige laid down was that this threequel was drug-free. Wanna do some cocaine? Hey, cocaine is the one thing that Feige said is off-limits. The mouse may have the final say, but it doesn't stop the two from letting out a slew of snow-filled slang along the way. Even disco dust. White girl interrupted? Even forest bump. Focus sugar. I wouldn't even try powdered go nuts. Do you want to build a snowman? Yes! Can't. Number 9. Wade's Interview I can't believe I'm finally here. I've waited for this moment for so long. Thank you, sir, for seeing me. I, I firmly believe that my services could be of great use to your organization. Many of us went into this movie thinking there were going to be cameos galore, especially when it came to the residents of the MCU. And while that was true to some extent, one of the most notable interactions was from someone we didn't expect, Happy Hogan. While you could say it's somewhat of a stand-in for Tony Stark, having Wade make an earnest yet failing attempt to join the Avengers to Happy of all people is equal parts surreal, hilarious, and oddly moving. I know I turn everything into it joke, but I I care and I, I want to use that feeling for something important. I, I want to matter. I need to show my girl that I matter. The breakout star of Fox's Marvelverse speaking to the director responsible for breathing life into the MCU's landmark stepping stone. I want to be an Avenger. Why do you want to be an Avenger? To look around you, I mean, they're the, they're the best of the best. And, and what they do matters. I need to be an Avenger. How's that for meta? Number eight, the life and death of Johnny Storm. Fight each other, we lose. Dear God, it's him. Who? No one. Leave it to Deadpool to find himself trapped in a barren wasteland with no hope of salvation, only to encounter the legendary hero made famous by the likes of Chris Evans. That's right, the Human Torch. Oh my God, he's gonna say it! Say what? Avengers! Flame on! Sorry, what? It's an exceptional use of Evans' previous tenure as the hot-headed member of the Fantastic Four, and a subversion that had everyone reeling. Not that he stuck around for very long. Thanks to some poor timing on Wade's part, Johnny finds himself in a bit of a sticky situation. And by that we mean he gets telekinetically skinned by Cassandra Nova. Yikes. I don't even know what half of that means! This, I, my hat's off to I, you, sir. What? Truly. This, I didn't, he's, that's... I... Number 7. Saving the Multiverse With Cassandra dead set on ripping reality apart, it falls to either Deadpool or Wolverine to sacrifice themselves to ensure their universe lives on. I waited a long time for this team up. You know something? You are the best, Wolverine. Too bad neither of them can agree on who should do the sacrificing. This leads to the Eternal Frenemies both taking the hit, relying on their healing factors to endure the end of all things. We're still not sure how to feel here. Should we be crying due to seeing both heroes on their last legs while Madonna's iconic Like a Prayer plays in the background? I am the X-Man. Probably. But much like Wade, we keep getting distracted by Logan's exposed torso. Now that's what you call maximum effort. Number 6. The Fox Cameos Even if trailers and speculation pointed to the return of Daphne Keene as Laura, aka X-23, we were not prepared for the following ensemble to grace our sight. Jennifer Garner as Elektra, Wesley Snipes as Blade, and freaking Channing Tatum as Gambit. This reveal is incredible on so many levels. The name's Remy Labo. You do have blonde, but you can call me the gambit. It's been a while since I've seen Sling Blade. 
hit me again. In some ways, it's redemption for the characters themselves who Fox arguably failed with their respective movie adaptations. Daredevil, I'm so sorry. It's fine. It's a chance for the actors to say goodbye to their roles in an epic fashion. And again, Channing Tatum as Gambit. Charles the playing cards. Make him go boom. Leave it to Deadpool to not only pay homage, but damn well near revitalize three Marvel icons that for all intents and purposes were in their cinematic graves. I don't like you. You never did. Number 5. Storming Cassandra's Keep Following up the Fox hero's illustrious reintroduction, the fight scene that succeeds it is just as bombastic. There's only been one blade. There's only ever gonna be one blade. As Deadpool and Wolverine endeavor to take down Cassandra, it falls to the rest to take down her minions plucked from across the multiverse. Not only is this a great action sequence, but we really get to see Electra Blade and Gambit come into their own. You know how long I've been waiting for this? Woo, I'm about to make a name for myself here. Yeah. If they're not making their enemies go boom, they're letting loose absolute zingers. <laughs> Some still trying to ice skate up here. It's also great to see Laura let loose. Aw, our little murder machine has grown up. Number 4. All the Wolverines It wouldn't be a multiverse story if we didn't encounter at least one other variant of either Deadpool or Wolverine. As it happens, we got both. Though we'd argue the latter has a tad more impact. Did you stick the landing, little guy? Yes, you did, comic-accurate short king. As Wade journeys across dimensions to find a Wolverine who can help save his timeline from extinction, he encounters quite the selection along the way. Not you, we're just going in a different direction. Some are straight out of beloved comics like Old Man Logan. Others were straight out of fan casting. Seeing Henry Cavill as Wolverine is something we'd never thought we needed in our lives. And yet here we are. You were just leaving. No, sir. Not while the fate of my universe is at stake. Number 3. Bye 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 Every opening scene to a Deadpool film has been phenomenal. So, to say this third outing might just be the best of the bunch is saying something. Okay, Peanut. I guess we're getting that team up after all. After digging up Logan's now decomposed corpse, Deadpool is set upon by the TVA. So what does he do? Uses his deceased buddy's adamantium skeleton to slaughter them, of course. Oh, and the whole thing is expertly timed to NSYNC's Bye Bye Bye. say what packs more of a punch. Wolverine's unbreakable razor-sharp bones or Deadpool's dance moves? Bye, bye, bye. <sighs> Number 2. Logan's Monologue One more word. Please give me one. Gubernatorial. <laughs> For the most part, Deadpool and Wolverine is a buddy action comedy with a lot of blood, cursing, and fourth wall breaks. But it also has moments of intense drama, and none is as potent as when Logan rips Deadpool to pieces. Not with his claws, that comes later. Rather, he lays into his immaturity in a brutal speech that does the impossible. It shuts Wade up. I mean, you are a ridiculous, immature, half-wit moron. I have never met a sadder more attention starved jabbering little prick in my entire life and that says a lot it is a venomous takedown of his character layered with harsh truths with Hugh Jackman acting his ass off to give us one of the greatest Wolverine moments of all time in the process you got nothing to say mouth before we continue be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos you have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them if you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Mask On For over 20 years, we have been waiting for this version of Wolverine to don his iconic attire, including the yellow costume and mask. We got the former very early on in the flick. As for the latter, they saved that reveal for its climactic fight. With variants of Deadpool, otherwise known as the Deadpool Corps, charging towards them, the duo prepares for battle. But not before Wolvie completes his look. You save the good stuff for special occasions? Killing mostly. The only thing more awesome than the mask's design is how beautifully bloody the ensuing battle is. Maximum effort. Even with a hundred Deadpools coming at them, they are essentially cannon fodder for the world's strongest Canadians. Which Deadpool and Wolverine moment made you lose your collective mind? Let us know in the comments. Anyway, there's nothing you or I can do to bring them back now. He has risen, baby girl! Did you enjoy this video? 
Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.